Chicago. Let's bring you back to the front of the congregation and let's see what's going on in Chicago, ladies and gentlemen. How can you come into a community and dump people in our community like this? This is not fair. The city's pressing migrant crisis in the spotlight now more than ever, and Southside residents are fired up over plans to put up tents. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Scott Schneider. And I'm Don Hasbrook. Tonight, a meeting on the issue was filled to capacity, and many community members are frustrated that they were not let in. Casey Cron is live in Roseland with the latest. Casey. John and Scott, community members want to make their voices heard on this subject, and tonight many weren't able to. On the table is a proposal from Mayor Brandon Johnson that would place hundreds of migrants in makeshift camps in a former Jewel parking lot. So now what Chicago is doing is building a tent city. Mayor Brandon Johnson is allocating his time, his resources, and his energy. His time, his resources, and his energy to allocate monies to build a tent city. And Chicago is one of the coldest places on earth in the wintertime. If y'all ever been to Chicago and letting that water, it's the reason why they call it the Windy City. Chicago, Mayor Brandon Johnson has a proposed plan on the table and residents are loudly voicing their opinion and they saying, listen, we don't want this. This is not why we elected you. You did not advocate for this. This is not what you said when you were on the campaign trail. This is not what you were doing when you were running against Lori Lightfoot. Question for all of my Chicagoans. Is Brandon Johnson in his early tenure as mayor of Chicago largely in your mind considered to be worse than Lori Lightfoot or not? Because that's a large task to be worse than Lori Lightfoot. People, is Brandon Johnson the spawn of Lori Lightfoot? They're alloc Listen, Chicago and New York is basically doing the same thing. They're taking all of y'all monies and y'all resources. They're continuing to be a sanctuary city. And they're allocating those resources to house, feed, clothe, give health care coverage, educate. And they're building a tent city. And the people of Chicago are saying, we don't want this. We don't want this. This is not what we're doing. We don't want them sleeping in the precincts. We don't want our, our cops over here allocating all of their times and their resources over to, over to trying to police and house and, and, and navigate through this whole migrant crisis. What is happening in Chicago? What is happening in Chicago? I don't understand it. At Sheldon Heights Church of Christ, an open dialogue on the migrant crisis hosted by Alderman Ronnie Mosley was packed inside and out. First of all, they definitely chose this venue for a reason. They chose a small venue so that they could discourage the community from being able. Not the white people deciding to come over to the black. Now, you know it's an issue when white people decide to come over to the black church and white people don't call it out. Listen, you know that they decided to have it at this smaller venue because they don't want multiple people in there and they don't want it to be a riot. Even though Mayor Brandon Johnson just called all of these young, these young people going over and taking over the streets large gatherings. They don't want us to have a large gathering over at the black church. And so this is what they're doing. They're very strategic about it. I know I'm familiar with it because we executed on the same strategy, XB31, ABCDEFG, over in 2018. When the white people come over to the black church in the hood, you know it's a problem. When they come over to the black Episcopal polished church or the church of God in Christ, touch a neighbor and say, I'm here two times, church, you know it's a problem when they, they look, look at her. She concerned. She put on her Sunday's best. She got on her beaded stuff. She got on her good glasses. She curled her hair and she put on her sweater. And she said, listen, this is a problem that we can come together on. And I'm coming over to the church of the God of the Jesus living, drink the blood twice, Catholic Episcopal Baptist Church. Mayor Brandon Johnson, you in trouble, trouble. 
They don't like you. They don't like what you got going on. Well, y'all voted for this, so this is what you get. To show up with fall and winter fast approaching, Mayor Brandon Johnson Look is looking to move migrants from police Look stations into what the city is calling winterized base camps. This is essentially like a band-aid to a gunshot wound. You are putting a band-aid on a huge problem at hand. One potential site, the former Jewel parking lot at 115th and Halstead. Uh, I think that's a bad idea. They want to push this out of sight and out of mind. But it's coming with pushback. Many calling on the city's leaders to focus on the need. Now, you know, when a black woman is up there with her Chanel glasses and she got her hair in that dookie thing right there on the top of her head. Now, you know, you got it coming. When, she, when black women got on her bamboo earrings, at least two pair, got that dookie thing on the top of their head and they start talking, they talk. You know that it's a problem. When, when, when white women and black women come together, that's how we got to change in, in society, how we got right now. That's what gave us feminism. When white women and black women come together and they, they agree on the issue and they stop calling each other names, you Keisha, you Karen, you know, you know that it's over. She got them edges slicked back. That means she ready for action. That's the same thing. That's the same way that they used to get ready when they was getting ready to fight. Oh, I know. I'm going to kick her. That's the same thing. When Karen and Keisha come together, it's a beautiful sight to behold. It's of taxpayers. We are the residents of this community. Talk to them. And we demand that they do not put these people here. Uh -huh. They're not even following the rules in the police station. What makes us think Look at the police station. Look at the police station. Oh, my God. Look at the police station. What is happening in Chicago? I'm going to follow the rules here. Residents tell us they are in need of grocery stores, mental health facilities, and housing for homeless individuals. By the end of this year, the migrant crisis will have cost taxpayers a quarter of a billion dollars. I did not hear that number. Let me rewind that a little bit. By the end of this year, the migrant crisis will have cost taxpayers a quarter of a billion dollars. Whoa. Whoa. You did not just say that it's going to cost LeBron James money. No, 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 no way is it going to cost you a quarter of a billion dollars. And you guys are going over there and standing in Washington, D.C. and petitioning Biden and you begging and you screaming and you pleading and you on your knees. You almost about to pull it out and unzip Biden's pants, pause, and you are willing to do anything. You on your knees begging, Biden, better, 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 Biden, please come over here and take care of us and give us some money and some additional funding. You wasn't working that hard when Chief Keefe was over there running Chicago. You ain't had nothing to say when Chief Keefe was running around doing his thing, but now all of a sudden, you over you begged your way to a quarter of a billion dollars in order to fix up the things that's going on in the city on behalf of people that you ain't never seen before when the very constituents that got you in the office can't get a dime, can't get no infrastructure updates, can't get no police, police can't get no raises, fire firefighters can't get no, no permanent jobs. Everybody is under duress. You got to make everybody take a haircut. And you was over there begging and pleading and taking money out of the tax fund that's supposed to be allocated for the cheering in order to be able to build up this quarter of a billion dollars to take care of people you ain't never seen before. This is crazy. We are living in a crazy land. Crazy land, Daisy land. Crazy. I've never seen this type of stuff happen in my lifetime. Look at those people. All right, shifting gears now to an incredibly serious topic. The headlines haven't changed. Helpless migrants are flooding border entry points with no end in sight. Open arms sanctuary cities such as New York are suddenly having a change of heart. That vacancy light 
is starting to go dark. Chicago is now in the spotlight. The city has 16 open shelters with more than 13,000 migrants, more arriving each day. And, and the spigot continues to be turned on. I'm going to be reading that super chat shortly. Thank you, my friend. This, the spigot continues to pour out. 13,000 people and growing. New York over there is sitting on 110. Now y'all can over y'all can just go and look at what happened in New York and how he over there begging in order to predict what's going to happen in Chicago. Thank God that Michigan and Detroit is not a sanctuary city. Woo! Thank God that we have adequate leadership now that is over here running the city effectively. Thank you Jesus that we are Listen, if you live in a city that's not a that's not a sanctuary city, thank God. Thank God. Chicago can just look at what's happening in New York and predict what's going to happen. And more is more pouring in every day. It's not stopping. More are pouring in every single day. Every day. <laughs> 16 shelters, 13.5 thousand migrants costing the city $30 million every single month. Every month, $30 million. You want your reparations? Well, there it is. Go get it. Go get it. No, remember when y'all was asking for reparations? They just went and got it. They gave it away. $30 million every single month. Every single, and growing. Where is Chicago finding all of this money in order to continue to fund this thing? What is happening out here in these streets? What is Chicago doing in order to find all of this money? 30 M's a month? It's estimated that the crisis is costing the city $30 million per month. And mm. now Chicago's mayor, Brandon Johnson, has come up with what he thinks is a novel idea. He's asked all 50 of the city's council members to identify a two-acre space in their ward to build tent cities to house the migrants. The mayor says that these tents will be equipped with heating and cooling and beds and food and, and hall and water hookups to house around 200 migrants each. But you do remember that we're talking about Chicago, right? So summer is almost over. Fall is in the air and winter isn't very far. Have you seen Chicago in the winter? The city sets a new record in 2019, minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's the mayor's plan to put migrants in tents and negative temperatures. I mean, what happens if someone gets hurt? Aldermen in Chicago are pushing back against the new mayor, saying that they don't have the space in their wards for these tent cities. And, and those tents would be used to a hope for the homeless in all 50 wards if the migrant crisis subsides. And that doesn't really leave them happy either. So Alderman Anthony Napolitano is from Chicago's 41st Ward, and he joins us here. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. You know, I, I read a little bit about you. I think it's safe to say that, you know, Chicago, the state of Illinois, has your heart and soul. You love everything about it. You're a dedicated public servant. What is the city like now? Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, I, I wear this this city on my sleeve. Um, you know, we're going through a lot of changes over the years, and you know, for the most part, the city is is, is beat up. Uh, the the paid for um, riots and looting that happened years ago, we're still building back from that. Now we have this border crisis, or I should say, it's more of like a border abandonment because the government has abandoned the border, letting all these votes come in. That's what they're hoping for. I'm assuming, but the, our biggest issue here is aldermen like me. I voted against being a sanctuary city. Now I'm being told that we have to find uh, lots or areas to put tents um, so these illegal immigrants could come in and sleep in and stay when the city has hundreds, if not thousands, of vacant buildings around the city that they can use to uh, put these illegal immigrants in until they find their final destination. Like it is, it's costing us up to a tune of $30 million a month to pay for this. And a lot of this money is going to not-for-profit organizations. And we're trying to track where this money is going because clearly you can see our police districts are, are flooded with, with the, uh, the immigrants, and it's just not a good idea. That's crazy. Are y'all seeing this? Oh, man. 
This is what happens when y'all elect people based off of their personality or how you feel about them or they in a good space. And so I like him. He got a spiked haircut. And so now all of a sudden, you know, you with him. No, 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 no. Y'all wanted him. Please don't advocate for him to leave. You elected him. You wanted him to be there for the duration of the term. You got, what, three and a half more years left? He ain't even been there for six months, I don't think. He ain't even been there for six months. He got Listen, he got time. He got time to run this city into the ground, man. At $30 million, that's what, $360 million a year and growing? By the time that this, by the time that a one-year term is up, he's going to probably have spent like six hundred million dollars because it's more migrants that's coming in every single day, every single day. Listen, call Kanye, tell him to go over there and help the migrants. Call Oprah, Barack Obama, ain't he from there? Ain't he from Chicago? Call a- Al over in the chat right now, hiding out. In a completely different uh, state, talking about, oh, I'm for Chicago. How come you don't live there? How come the very people that got the most to say about how great Chicago is ain't there no more? See, I could talk about Detroit because I'm actually here right now doing the Millionaire Morning Show in the city. I want to see what the heck is going on with over there in Chicago. I think, you know what I think I'm about to do? I don't think I got to. We ain't got nothing on the calendar this this year, this week, do we? I might take me a trip over to Chicago. Take my camera cameras. Take my cameras, go and do some recording, seeing what's happening over in Chicago. That ain't nothing but a 45 minute flight. That ain't nothing but a 45 minute flight. Shout out to Chicago. I might head over to the Chicago this weekend. See what's happening in the streets. Get first, get right there on the ground with the people. Get the sentiment of the people. See what's happening. What do y'all think? You think we need to head over to Chicago this weekend and see what's happening? Oh, no, Rita. Ain't no road trips. You can forget that. Anton, don't do road trips no more. I'll give you an hour, hour and 15 minutes at the most. At the most. No road trips. No road trips. Sky Sky said, Anton, you should. Anton visits O Block. Oh, no, 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 no. Anton don't do O Block. I don't do no block that got a letter as the first name. I don't do no blocks that got a letter as the first name. You can forget it, fam. Nope. Nope. I'm going to need you to get all of your consonants and vowels in your name before I come and visit where it is that you're from. Don't invite me nowhere where it's a letter as the first name. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I don't want to be nowhere where the letter is your first name. I'm not interested. I don't want to go to no block that start with an O, A, B, C, D, E, F, or G. My people saying no, don't go. My people is in the chat saying no, don't go. All right, we'll see what happens. I'm going to see what the sentiment of the people is. I might put a poll up in the chat. I might put a poll up in the chat. 